friends, Lara Chikevich here, coming to you at a safe distance on my porch here in Winnipeg. Welcome to another Edmonton Opera Happy Hour, where every week an artist from the upcoming season will talk opera, their favorite cocktails, and a little bit about what's happening in their lives. Let's get started. Every happy hour needs a great cocktail, and since we are a gin household, we love a good martini. So let's get started. First, we are going to do a six to one ratio. So we're going to do six parts gin. I love Plymouth gin. It's one of my favorite martini gins. It's smooth, it's classic London dry, nice and elegant. Six parts gin. One part dry vermouth of your choice. And she goes. And then you'll notice we're using a mixing glass and not a cocktail shaker. If you shake your martini, you're going to get a cloudy spirit. So if you like a clear spirit in your glass, stirring is your best option. Also, you'll notice I didn't talk about vodka being an option because a vodka cocktail in a martini glass is not a martini. A true martini is a gin beverage, so sorry 007. So we're going to stir this until it's nice and cold. You can see the glass is starting to get a little bit frosted. We have some martini glasses that have been pre-chilled. Take your Hawthorne strainer. Throw it around. Already drunk. No, haven't had anything, I promise. Pre chilled glasses. Now you can garnish a classic martini with either olives or a twist of citrus. Sheldon likes olives, so we will give him some olives. I despise olives, so what I am more properly making is called a Gibson. And a Gibson is garnished with pickled onions. Technically two, but I really like pickled onions, so screw it. Here's four. And there we have it. Two martinis. Cheers. How are things in Winnipeg? We're really lucky, both of us, both Sheldon and I, are healthy, our families are healthy and safe, so that's the important thing. Um, we're adapting to both of us working at home now. My home working routine hasn't changed much. I'm walking every day, we both walk every day. Um, I'm practicing doing the same work online that I would always do. Um, but, you know, things aren't normal, so we're making sure to check in more with family and friends to make sure everybody's okay. Um, looking forward to things in the future, like getting into my garden. Spring hasn't quite got here yet, so I'm very anxious to do that. However, the bunnies have arrived already, so I'm busy chasing bunnies like a crazy bunny chasing lady out of the garden already. Bunnies! I see you, bunny nemesis. Um cutting my own bangs twice, sorry Kimmy. Um, yeah, you know, taking it day by day and just seeing what happens. How did you first discover opera? Classical music has always been a part of my life, but opera was never the plan growing up. Uh, I was on my way to becoming a chiropractor and one of my older brothers said, you know, that's great Lara, just, just one question. If you could do anything in the world and money didn't matter what would it be and i didn't even bat an eye and i said well i'd be a singer and he said well that's great why aren't you doing that um so that started me on my musical journey in post-secondary school uh, but still opera wasn't the plan i wanted to be a singer songwriter i was going to be jan arden that was the thing um except i'm a total garbage songwriter and i found out that i was a pretty decent classical singer and in my last year of my undergrad my teacher then, Henrietta Schellenberg, said, you know, I think you might be an opera singer. And, you know, being a kid going, what does that mean? Oh my God! Um, you know, that started the wheels turning and started me on my journey uh, into pursuing opera as a career. 
and I still love my Jan Erg, I love you Jan, if you ever want to duet with an opera singer, please pick me. <laughs> um, I'll be your backup singer any day. Uh, but yeah, doors started opening and I just chose to walk through them and see what happened. And here we are. If you could share one piece of advice with your younger self, what would it be? If I could sit my younger self down and tell myself one thing, it would be embrace failure. Failure is one of the greatest teachers possible and I shied away from that for so long, especially in places where you're given the gift of failing in safety. Um, that is the most magnificent thing and to take advantage of any of those opportunities. Just go for things and see what happens. Don't go for the safe thing that you know you can attain. How do you know what you can attain if you don't just go for it and let go? Embrace failure. What was it like performing in Edmonton? I was so happy to finally make my Edmonton Opera debut this January and February in The Marriage of Figaro with an amazing cast and crew and team. Um, Edmonton Opera is really a family and they have a remarkable facility all under one roof that enables a really wonderful collaborative spirit to permeate the whole process from costumes to sets to production to rehearsing to the admin staff. It's really a wonderful family and that's a wonderful feeling to be a part of uh, as an artist. Um, I had a really fun time being in Edmonton when I was outside of rehearsals too. I'm looking forward to being back for La Boheme, um, getting back to Transcend Coffee for some of my favorite coffee beans, um, hitting up La Boule for their Saturday quiche specials. So good, oh my God. Um, going to Duchess Bakery for every single treat possible um, and hitting the river trails some more, you know, when it's not minus 38 degrees out and exploring all the beauty and wonder that Edmonton has to offer. Tell us about La Boheme. What's in store for audiences? I think La Boheme is one of the most quintessential operas out there. There's something for everybody. There are massive crowd scenes full of spectacle and wonder down to intimate moments that are full of tenderness and love that will break your heart and draw you in. Um, there's a wonderful cast of characters but at the heart of it, it's a love story about a boy and a girl who fall head over heels for one another and for whom life throws many obstacles in their path and in the path of their love and how they go through with that um, and how also they with their friends go through with that and band together to figure out a way to survive and make something of life no matter what it's throwing at them. Um, I'm also so happy and excited to be working with this amazing cast and team, um, most of whom I already know. The only person I don't know in the cast, I think, is our Shonard, Aaron Dimoff. Um, so I'm really looking forward to finally meeting him. Uh, Andrew and Miriam, I know, but we've never done shows together, so that's going to be fun to finally get to do that. I'm excited to be singing with Peter Barrett as my Marcello. Um, we first met in Newfoundland at Opera on the Avalon doing Into the Woods together. He is the baker and myself is Cinderella. So we've been joking that the baker and Cinderella finally get their happy ending, except this time it's in La Boheme with a different quartet. Uh, and finally, my friend Steve Hegedus. I'm so happy to get to do a show with him. We first met at L'Atelier Lyrique de l'Opera de Montréal, apprenticing there some years ago, and I've always had a blast working with him. He's a phenomenal artist and one of the funniest people you will ever see on stage. So if I corpse, telling you right now, it's Steve's fault. Cheers. <laughs> Have you sung the role of Musetta before? Describe her as a character. I'm lucky to have sung Musetta twice before, the first time at L'Opéra de Montréal on the main stage uh, with Alain Gauthier directing, and the second time here at home at Manitoba Opera on the Edmonton Opera sets, as fate would have it, with Edmonton's own Brian Diedrich directing. So lots of Edmonton connections, and this time around we're going to combine a little bit of both of that with Alain directing and being on the Edmonton Opera sets. Musetta is such a fun character to play. She is multifaceted, um, sexy, flirty, smart, strong, fun, 
capricious, a little bit vindictive, probably a lot vindictive, resourceful. Um, but through it all, I think is a person with a true and good heart. And that's what I think is really important to remember as I play her, um, that she is a good person with a good heart. And that in a moment like the waltz song in act two, it's not pure caprice. Uh, she's a woman that I think truly loves Marcello and they just can't figure out a way to be together. It's one of those great tragedies that, you know, sometimes the people you love most in life are the people that you just aren't meant to be with. And so she's been hurt by him and wants to hurt him back. And I really think that's what that moment is about. It's a private moment in a really public place. And part of the fun is that you have everybody on stage watching it. And the gift that you get as an actor is that those people are giving you so much focus and telling so much of the story with you. And so your job is to really respect what's on the page, the material and the story you are telling and earn the focus and the power that your colleagues are all giving you. Um, and on that note, I'm super excited to finally meet the Edmonton Opera Chorus, who I have heard so many wonderful things about. Um, you guys, I can't wait to do that scene and make some wonderful music with you. Opera seems to be the family business. We're an opera family here in Winnipeg. Sheldon is the director of production for Manitoba Opera. He's also my favorite person and videoing this right now for me. Uh, thank you. So getting to work together is really wonderful and a treat. Um, he comes from the music and the theater side of things and really understands what being in this life is like. So I'm very, very fortunate. Um, what you see on stage is just a tip of the iceberg in terms of the talent, the hours, the organization it takes to put on a show. It really, really takes a village to put on an opera and Sheldon's an important part of that village. Um, and we're really, really lucky that we get to work together. What's your dream role? I'm so lucky and thankful to have been gifted with some amazing roles to sink my teeth into in my career. And yes, there are more still that I would love to try. Um, Rusalka, Manon, Traviata, Filomena, um, shout out to John Astacio, yes, Canadian opera. Um, some Strauss maybe, some Mozart. But in the last four weeks I've been thinking, you know, I've still taken so much for granted in this career. And I think that my true dream role is the one that I get to sing with all of my colleagues in front of a live audience again. Thanks for watching, friends. I really hope to see you in person next season at La Boheme. Until then, you can catch another Edmonton Opera Happy Hour next week. To all of our healthcare workers, our essential workers, and everyone who is adapting their routine so we can beat this, thank you so much. This one is for you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and wash your hands. Cheers. <laughs>